Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Shane Eikenberry, and you're watching another episode of Icon Barbecue. Uh, we got a really special cook plan today. We're going to be smoking this four and a half pound uh, rib roast out on the Oklahoma Joe's Bronco. I know the holidays are coming up, so this is going to be a really popular cook. We're going to throw this herb rub on it. We're going to get uh, some horseradish sauce. That was a tough one. Some horseradish sauce. Horseradish. Some horseradish sauce. Some horseradish sauce made up as well uh, to go with it. It's gonna be a great cook, guys. Stay tuned. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So first things first, let's get a look at this beautiful, beautiful prime rib roast. This is choice grade, but as you can see, it has some pretty good marbling, a lot of fat in there. This is going to be a good cook. So we want to get this all just a little trimmed up, maybe just some of the hard fat we want to take off. So I'm going to go ahead and get that off the front. There we go. You do want to leave a little bit. It will provide a protective layer for the bottom and all that fat will create a lot of moisture and a lot of flavor. All right, nothing too crazy. She's looking good. I'm really happy with this. Not an expert by any means at actually trimming it. I'm happy with it. That's all that matters. All right, so next on the list, we're gonna go ahead and get this rub made up and I got a quarter cup of salt here. It's coarse salt. And a quarter cup of cracked black pepper. Teaspoon of dried minced onion. Teaspoon of dried, finely chopped rosemary. And one teaspoon of minced garlic. Tried to dry it out the best I could. There we go. Now you just want to combine those. Could have used a bigger bowl. Give you guys a look at it. Hopefully, there we go. Looking real good. Smells really good already. All right, quick disclaimer. Normally you would wrap this in some butcher's twine, but I actually forgot it. Uh, I don't have any for this cook, but I'm just gonna let it ride and see what happens. I figure either way it'll taste really good. Just might not present as well. But if you're doing this at home, you might wanna wrap it up in some butcher's twine just to hold that form. Okay, so next step, we're gonna add a little bit of olive oil to the outside here. This will help it brown up and help this rub adhere to it. Just a light coating, make sure you get all the sides. All right, and now we wanna get our rub on there. Just gonna take it. Gonna make a mess for sure. Just kinda pile it on there. We want a really nice crust. You can rub it in. It's probably a little too much rub just for this four pounder, but it's only me and Kayla, so I didn't wanna go overboard. God, you can flip it up on its side. Get the stuff off the table here. That way, there's not a lot of waste. It actually works out pretty good, as you can see. Oh my gosh, I did it again, guys. I touched it with both hands. What am I freaking doing? Gotta lose a glove. There we go. Now my hands are gonna smell like garlic for sure. All right, she's looking absolutely beautiful right now. We're going to get out there, get that grill fired up. Before I do that, though, I'm going to give you a close-up on this just to see how it, uh, you know impressive this rub looks on it. And uh, I think you guys are really going to like this one a lot. All right, got the grill fired up, and while that's coming up to temp, we're gonna go ahead and throw together our horseradish sauce. Uh, God, I have uh, a lot of trouble saying that. Anyway, <laughs> um, so this is something you can buy uh, at the store, but it's really easy to make yourself, and if you make it yourself, you can kind of adjust it how you see fit. It's a recipe I've tried multiple times. Very simple, very straightforward. You can probably find it on the internet uh, just about anywhere. Easy, simple, delicious. All right, three tablespoons of prepared horseradish. One fourth cup of sour cream. One tablespoon of Dijon mustard. Yeah, it might have been a little much. One tablespoon of mayonnaise. And then one tablespoon of green onion. 
go. Just want to go ahead and mix that all together. All right, I'm going to get this in the fridge, let it sit for a while, give those flavors a chance to kind of combine. Stay tuned. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the pit is up to temp. Well, it overshot it just a little bit. We're actually going to cook at 225 today. Um, so I'll, I'll put the prime rib on there now and then start bringing it back down slowly. If I could give one piece of advice for this cook, it's that you definitely want an internal probe. You want an ambient temperature probe and an internal probe. This is a very important cook uh, to read those internal temperatures as well as the ambient temperatures. You don't want to overcook this thing. You don't want to cook it too hot. Uh, all right, going to get it on there now. So for today's cook, we actually do have the heat deflector in. I know most of the time you guys see me cook, I don't use that heat deflector. I'm gonna grab the prime rib. I'm gonna go ahead and lay it right here, dead center, fat side down. Kinda tighten it up since I forgot that butcher twine. Hopefully we don't lose too much shape. I'm gonna take my internal probe right here, stick it dead center, go as deep as I can. Today we use that cowboy lump coal. We also got some hickory wood on there. It's going to be a really nice flavor. If you're doing this for the holidays and you're worried about color, you can throw a block of cherry on there, get that red tint that uh, everybody kind of goes after. Uh, but this right here is going to be an excellent cook. It's going to impress everybody. You guys are going to be real happy with this one. All right, I'm going to get the pit closed up now and pretty much do nothing until it hits 120 internal. All right, ladies and gents, the meat's been on for about an hour now. Pit is at 234 right there on the dot, 225, 235. I'll, I'll stick it out in there, I'm fine with that. The meat temp is actually at 81. My probe to the Thermapro actually failed, so I'm using this, uh, what is this thing, charbroiler um, for the actual meat probe, but it's at 82 right now. I'm gonna go ahead and raise the uh, temp on the pit. I wanna get it around 300 for the last part of this cook. Remember, we're gonna take it to 120 internal. I'll give you guys a look at the uh, meat now. Looking delicious. Really excited about this one. Gonna raise the temp a little bit. And I'll leave the top where it's at. Just change this side vent, vent just a little bit. Gonna let it go. All right, stay tuned. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is that time. Internal is 124. We're gonna get it pulled off. Show you guys what it's looking like right now. Pit's at about 350. Went ahead and opened all the vents. Gonna, kinda just to get a good sear on the outside of this. Oh, also threw some corn on. There we go. Need to turn that corn. It's looking real good. Try and give you a close up of it. All right, gonna get her off the pit, get her inside, give her a short little rest, then we're gonna get the cut into her. Stay tuned. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the time has come. She's had about a 30 minute rest. She's looking wonderful. All this bark, oh, I can't wait to cut into her. Gonna do that now. Hopefully I don't mess this shot up. It's really awkward to show it on camera. Let's go here. Oh my God. Wow. <laughs> Oh, you really have to love prime rib. I think I need to sharpen my knife. My goodness. I mean, it really, it really, really doesn't get any better than this. This is incredible. God, are you guys seeing this? Oh, heavy breathing. I just want to eat it now. It's actually pretty cost effective too. I think we paid, I don't know, 40 bucks for this. We're gonna need a lot of food. Oh, this backside's gonna be, I'm gonna leave that, cut it off camera because I'll probably make a fool of myself. But I'm not kidding guys. This thing is ridiculous absolutely what does Malcolm Reed say it's a clapper I know you can't see anything I really angled that terrible all right gonna back you guys up get a taste test because I really can't wait to try this so let's do that now all right guys I don't know where to start 
I want this piece right here. Get the spinalis, a little round part on the end there. That's gonna be one of the best bites you can get. Watch this. this. Oh my god. Okay, we'll try it without the sauce first, see what the taste is, and we'll try it with the sauce. Wow. Might be one of the best, best bites of beef I've ever had, actually. It's so good. It's really, really good. All right. Oh my God. I feel like it doesn't even need sauce. I feel like this is doing damage. Let's go ahead. Traditional horseradish sauce. Oh God, I'm having a lot of trouble with that. Horseradish. I'm done. Done. Sauce. All right, here we go. Doesn't matter what you do. It's phenomenal. I have to take another bite. I'm sorry. All right. No bark. Let's see if it was a flan. Eh, we'll go without it. Nope, not a fluke. Now we'll go with it. Wow. Sorry. I'm having like a passionate moment. Not even paying attention to you guys. All right, so let's go over what we did. We used that herb rub on the outside. I'll leave all the ingredients and the measurements down below. Got it out there on the pit with some hickory, using that lump coal, ran it about 225 for about an hour, then raised the temp, got it around 300, went up to about 120 internal at 300, and then from 120 to 125, pit wide open. I think it got about 350, 400, somewhere in there. Went ahead and made up that horseradish sauce as well goes perfect with it you guys are going to really love this meal hope you guys enjoyed the video and i will see you god that seemed abrupt i don't know i'll see you next week you guys have a great thanksgiving peace out made the made up this horseradish sauce goes perfect with horseradish sauce why shane why is that so tough anyway